Welcome back to Math for Game Developers. Uh, we took a little bit of a break there. Sorry about that. I, you know, I was traveling, and then, and then I was busy, and then I was sick, and then I just started making other excuses and this sort of thing. But we're back now. Also, sorry that um, that you know I'm not I'm not streaming this one. Uh, I had a lot of fun on the streams, but it's actually, it's like, it's pretty exhausting to be sitting in front of a camera for like the four or five hours that it takes me to make these these videos. Um, so I think I need a little bit of a break from that, but I had a lot of fun, and thank you to everybody who came and watched the stream. Had a great time. I, I might do it more in the future. So, in any case, where were we? Um, here we are. We let When we left off, we have this curve. Um... That, that is a cubic spline that describes at what point, I'm gonna call this curve Q, and when we give it a, a value T, which represents time, it tells us where the, say a camera or something, we, you know, cubic splines are commonly used for cameras, where the camera is at that time T. Um, and what we want to know is kind of the opposite. Uh, be, well, so, so we want this, so the problem w with this is that when we have our control points, you know, I've drawn two control points here, and when they're kind of close together, then the camera moves fast going into the control points, and then it starts moving slow, and then it goes outside and starts moving fast again. If you want an example of that, then, you know, watch the previous video that I did. Um, but we want to fix that. We want to try and get the camera moving at a constant speed always, because it's not really very, you know, it's... it's it may not be what we want for it to be fluctuating in speed all the time. So we are gonna, we have to, it's called reparameterize this curve uh, for the, for the, um, t for it to be a constant speed curve. So that's, that's the goal here. Okay, so step one of that is we're going to just for now assume that we have this function, okay, that accepts the the curve between two times let's say a and b and it what it spits out is the length of the curve the arc length of the curve so for example if you've if you're just walking along this at any speed it doesn't matter what speed but you're just walking along how far between time a and b how far did you go along this curve okay it, regardless of how fast you were going how far did you go um, that's what this L is going to represent, and it's called the arc length. Uh, let's see, I can write that right here. Arc length. It's the arc length formula for the curve. Now, I'm not going to go into exactly what it is just yet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show that later, but we're just going to assume that we, in fact, we already have before solved. Like, we've solved the problem of what is the arc length of a curve, uh, of like the entire curve as the player was walking around. This was the integration video that I did. And we just did it by cutting this curve up into very tiny segments and then adding them all together. And then we got an approximation of, uh, of the distance that the players traveled. And we're really doing the same exact thing here. So this, this is not a hard problem to solve. We've solved this before. We can find what this total length of this curve is from zero to, I wrote four here, but I shouldn't have written three, so the total length of the curve, and we're just going to call that L, okay? Just plain L, not L of Q, but just L. Um, and what we want to know, what we want to know is at what time, at what time have we gone one-third of the length of L? One-third of the length of L, that would put us about, maybe about right, here, so that's one third, and then we'll go another one third, and then to complete, we'll do the final third, right? If we can break this into a section where, like, we know uh, what time, what 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 t at what t we've gone a third of the length, then we can do it for maybe like a tenth or a hundredth or a sixtieth or whatever it needs to be, so that we can break this into little pieces, each one cover covering the same distance. And then we can just render the camera at the next little piece every frame. And that will give us the impression that we're, we're moving at a constant speed, right? So we need to solve this equation for the only unknown. We know this guy, so we know him. And we know everything here. 
but we just don't know what t is. We need to solve for t. Okay. If we can do that, then we can put any number here, and we can, you know, we can make these as small as we like. Um, so we have to solve for t. So we really do have to know what this arc length formula is. So we're gonna try and derive it right now. So um, I'm gonna take a little section of this curve. Let's take that section right there. And I'm gonna blow it up. I'm gonna make it huge. So we can see what's going on. And it looks something like this. Okay, now if I zoom in enough, I zoom in and in and in and in and in, eventually it's gonna kinda look like a straight line. It gets flatter and flatter and flatter until finally it's a straight line. Um, and that's good because straight lines are really easy to deal with. So, so let's see. Uh, let's, let me call this point right here at the beginning. Uh, it'll be this point. So let's see. It comes in. Yeah, so it comes in this side. So this is T0 and this is T1. So T0 minus T1 is going to be delta T, which is the amount of time that it takes to travel this tiny little, tiny, tiny little bit of the loop, okay? And then we are also going to have, okay, right here, this is going to be delta X, and this is going to be delta Y. In other words, the change in the X coordinate and the change in the Y coordinate during this tiny little um, uh, length of time. Okay, so these are the these are the formulas that we have to work with. So we maybe can't figure out what is the length of the entire section from time A to time B that we're looking at, but we can figure out this tiny little section because we've gotten this guy flat, and now we just have a little triangle. We have a right angle right here. We have a little triangle, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem, and we know what that is. That is, let's see, delta x squared plus delta y squared is equal to, and I'm going to call this distance right here, L squared. So L is the distance that we're trying to find. And like, great, you know, we just take a square root and bam, we found the length of L pretty straightforward. We haven't done anything so far that we didn't do in the, um, in the first uh, few integration videos. So we found a tiny little length of L right here. Uh, and now we need to um, just add up all of the tiny little lengths of L. And we'll do that by taking a sum. So then again, this is also exactly what we did way back in those, um, you know, we're, we're taking a bunch of little sums. And that's exactly what, what integration is. Okay. But this formula isn't quite complete, we need to be summing over a variable in it. And that variable in this case needs to be time. So I need to add a dt here. I'm sorry, a delta, it will be a dt in a second. But for now, it's a delta t. And if I add a delta t here, I need to I divide by delta t squared over here in order to keep everything the same. So I didn't actually change anything. I just, uh, I multiplied by delta t and then I divided by delta t. And see, these are squared, but since they're inside a radical, they end up just being a regular delta t. So I could cancel all of these out if I want to, but I need this to be here uh, because this is my integration variable. When, if you remember from our integration videos, if you take a delta, that delta t and you make it smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until it's infinitely small, and then you sum up all of those infinitely tiny little delta t's, that is exactly what integration is. And so I'm going to be able to write a new, okay, when we, when we make these, well, I'm, I shouldn't write equal, I should just, I should write it like a, approximately equal, as the smaller the delta t gets, the more equal this becomes, okay. And then our formula, and all these deltas turn into d's, and we get dx over dt squared, plus dy over dt squared, and then we have a square root, and then we have dt here at the end. So uh, again, that is, and this is, um, this is a derivative, this is turned into a derivative now. So we have the integral of the square root 
of the the derivative of x squared plus the derivative of y squared. Uh, those are both with respect to t. So this is what 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 was that? What did we just do? We found oh, and this integral will be from a to b, from time a to time b. We found this arc length formula. Okay, this is the arc length formula right here. And what did we need? We needed to solve it for t. So let me fill this in for t now. Uh, and we will see that, okay, what we need is lq from 0 to t. And that will equal uh, the integral from 0 to t of all of this mess. I'm not going to write it back out again. There's some mess in there, okay. But we can really easily see that this integral is kind of ugly and we're not going to be able to solve for this t value like there's no simple antiderivative here like it's not a we've only talked about polynomial integrals and there are many other kinds of you know things that you can integrate but this is not one of them this is ugly and most of the time there's no simple closed form formula for this so now we're stuck and uh, we're not quite sure what to do because we want to solve we want to solve for this t value right here which is our only unknown so but there's a reason that we've been studying numerical analysis and I'll show you what that is okay let's let's continue I'm gonna so we have an equation right here I'm gonna subtract one third L from both sides okay I'm gonna say I'm gonna you know I'm gonna write it the LQ way because that's a little faster but that's this big integral minus one-third L okay equals zero so I subtracted one-third L from both sides and I got this junk minus one-third L equals zero now that is a formula I'm sorry a function of T is it not T is the only unknown that we have in this equation we know what L is we know how to get everything in here except for that little t right there. So that's a function of t that we want to be zero. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that sounds like a perfect place where we can apply our root finding techniques. Okay, this is why we've been studying numerical analysis all this time. We are going to use our root finding techniques to find at what value of t this equation becomes zero and when we find that we will know exactly the time when we are one-third of the way through this um, through this uh, through this curve through this cubic spline so that's what we are going to start doing next week see you then